Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching uh, Nile uh, Cruise on Nile TV. And in this segment, dear viewers, the personality of Holy uh, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is so vigorous, uh, penetrating, and transcendental that it's crossed the barriers of time and space. The passage of time has only enhanced the freshness, clarity, and depth of his impact on believers as well as non-believers. While with the lapse of several centuries, his image has assumed more distinct and purified form than ever before. And we are honored in this context, dear viewers, to host our distinguished guest, um, um, Mr. Saeed Kishk. Thank you for having uh, me. Uh, English Islamic researcher at Islamic Research uh, Academy to highlight the image of Prophet Muhammad through Western uh, eyes. And of course, Mr. Muhammad is uh, one of uh, the very distinguished guests that we always um, uh, interview at Nile TV International. And I think he has a special program at uh, Nile yep. TV International. Yeah, and it's always a pleasure. A very good day, sir. That's sir, my pleasure. at the beginning, I'd Thank like to ask you, of course, yep. how do Western and wor world thinkers describe Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or peace be upon him of Islam or the Islamic Prophet of course. Right. Or the um, Prophet of Islam. Of course. Um, in the name of Allah the most merciful, all praises to Allah and may Allah peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him first that we have sent you at the mercy for all the whole mankind. So that is what is the Quran describes him as a mercy. What about the Western the people describe the Prophet Muhammad? And we talk about here about the fair-minded non-Muslim people who are given testimony for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. For example, Gandhi, such spiritual leader of the Indian movement. What did he say about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a, a public speech that took place or delivered in 1924? Mahatma Gandhi, a spiritual leader of Indian movement, he said that I wanted to know the best of the life of the person who holds today undisputed sway over the millions of hearts of people. And he said that I become more convinced that it was not the sword that spread Islam at that time. It is a trust of the Prophet Muhammad. It is a devotion for his friends and his companions. More than Gandhi, recently, for example, in 2016, as a spiritual leader of Indian, she said that Muhammad's life is the best example of the entire humanity. And she followed and saying that we need to follow the Prophet's teaching in order to achieve a global peace. The what she said recently. More than Muhammad Gandhi and more of these, we have Michael Hurd, we have Brand Show, who described the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after studying his biography in a very well way, saying that we should call Muhammad as a savior of the humanity. And he imagined if the Prophet Muhammad were among us nowadays, he said that if Muhammad were us among nowadays, if Muhammad were among us nowadays, he said that he could solve all the problems that achieve progress and happiness. For, for nowadays. A lot of people talked about Michael Hart, for example, who took and wrote a book about the most influential people in the history with a very decisive criteria. A non-Muslim, famous American writer said that Muhammad at the top of these of this list. So the Western philosophy and writers and even the French military, Napoleon Bonaparte, he's saying that I just wish, he wished that, that he could unite the educated people of the whole world and make a regime based on the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad and on the Quran. So this is how the Western philosophers and fair-minded people think about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, away from some people who doesn't know the Prophet Muhammad, the actual image of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that recently maybe become they are trying to defiate uh, the image of our prophet of islam but um reading the stories and reading the box of those who are real philosophers of those who are fair-minded among the western people 
they really give a real testimony about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu okay, alaihi um, wasallam. Okay, Mr. Saeed, um, mm -hmm. in his 1992 book, The Hundred, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, Michael H. Hart yep. chose the Prophet of Islam to top the list. You intake, uh, your intake on this, sir. Michael Hart, as you just said, he's a famous American writer. And he really wrote a book, a very famous book, William book, called Al Uzama Umia in Arabic. In English, it was talking about, and he ranked the most influential people throughout the whole history. And even at the beginning and at the introduction of his book, he said that being a Muhammad at the top of my list, because he's not a Muslim, he's not a Muslim writer and famous, he's actually a fair writer and he's fair minded philosophers and he just put some criteria and he didn't find anyone to put at the top of his list except Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so and he said that in his introduction of the book of his book al uzama wa mi'a azamhum muhammad saying that putting muhammad at the top of my list it will be questions by others and i want to let you all of you know that why i put muhammad at the top of his list saying that he is the only one that he's become a successful or the most successful person in both secular, worldly, and religious level. That's why I never hesitated to put Muhammad at the top of his list, which is a book, which is a very famous book. A lot of books has been written about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muntu Ghamri, for example, mm -hmm. in his book, he wrote about three books, Muhammad in Mecca, Muhammad in Medina, Muhammad Dinun wa Dawla. So Prophet Muhammad as a prophet and a state man. In his book, he tried to defeat the image of the Prophet Muhammad, actually, Muntu Ghamri. He tried to defeat the image of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, but he couldn't let, he's a little bit honest, and he couldn't say, he couldn't defeat the truth that Muhammad was politically and socially successful person. That's why what makes others saying that Muhammad as a savior of the whole humanity, of all humanity. So Michael Hart, a famous American writer, and his really famous book, which has been translated in a lot of trans in a lot of languages nowadays, and we title it in Arabic Al Uzama Umia, because he ranked the most influential hundred figures through all the history. He bought the Prophet Moses. He bought the Prophet Jesus. Of course, he bought all of these prophets. But he said that I couldn't put anyone at the top of my list except but Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as he's the same, the only one who really was most successful person according to his criteria, which is fair mind criteria in both secular and religious level. That's why he was at the top of the list of Muhammad or al azama or mi'ah azamu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, uh, why was um, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, misunderstood in uh, much of the Western world? It's not only the Prophet Muhammad, actually. When I'm talking about, though Islam is, um, is, a, uh, is, is the fastest growing religion, it is the most widely misunderstood religion, including his Prophet, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the majority of scholars are saying that this is due to the misinformation that is spread everywhere. The misrepresenting of some Muslims to Islam. Some people who are cutting the verses of the Quran and saying this is what the Quran. Some people who does not study the Prophet's biography in a very well way. And they are trying to cut a part of his biography to, let, to misguide people, to misrepresent Islam. And this is our, I think, as our duty of Muslims to represent Islam and to present the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a very suitable way. So, the Prophet misunderstood, the Prophet's image of the Prophet Muhammad misunderstood, particularly for political issues. If you just, after the 11th of September and other issues which is adhered to Islam. And the majority of people, or now even the misconception which is going around the whole world is that Islam is a religion of terrorism. So all of these misconceptions is really need to be refuted. Even if some people of Muslims people do something which is not away from Islam, we cannot judge the bark by only one person. Exactly. Where 
it doesn't mean that there is a black sheep everywhere. There is a black sheep in Islam, there is a black sheep in Judaism, there is a black sheep in Christianity. That doesn't mean that someone who does something, even if he is a Muslim, that doesn't mean that he representing Islam. So, for my point of view is that, that why people misunderstood Islam and misunderstood the Prophet of Islam, though it is the most fastest, it is the fastest growing religion nowadays according to statistics everywhere. This is because of the misinformation. This is because of misrepresenting of Muslims to Islam. Though we are an academic world, but still the internet has a huge of misguided information nowadays. Mm -hmm. That's why we are giving just a little bit of advice for some people. If you are looking for information, you need to try to look it up in a reliable, authentic uh, sources. Okay, sir, before and right mm -hmm. after the birth of uh, Prophet Muhammad, may peace, peace be, upon be upon him, him. Uh, several events uh, took place in the heaven, in heaven and earth. Yep. Uh, would you shed more light on these miracles, please? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quran describes him, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُور This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the Prophet Muhammad. Allah sent you a light. And this is what his mother saw at the day of his birth. A light lit up between east and west. And this is what is the testimony of some uh, ladies who are staying at that night with the mother of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad was born at the year of al -Fil, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected his house from the army of Abyssinia. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born on the day of al -Ithnain, the day of the Monday. And on the day of Monday, as it mentioned in authentic hadiths that mentioned in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, on that day in which the Prophet Muhammad was born, in that day in which the revelation Muhammad was received, in that day in which our deeds represented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of events happens actually. One of these, like a 10-year-old fire that been worshipped of Bergia, was extinguished at the day of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Iwani Kithra was broken at the day of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, just to sum up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described Muhammad as قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَلِدْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمَ Jackly, a Spanish Western writer, a Spanish, a Spanish writer and, and, and philosophers, he said that I couldn't describe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than what Allah describes him in the Quran harisun alaykum bil mu'minin ra'ufur rahim as he's a merciful for the believers as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them in the Quran Sir, uh, do you see any significance uh, of Prophet's miracles? Um, the Prophet's miracle actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophets with their miracles why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send miracles with the prophets? To let all people know that they are not a human being. They are just a human being, of course. But to believe them that they are being, they have a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I would like to focus on matter here and a point here. All prophets and their miracles for us as a Muslims, we believe in all of them. We believe in all prophets and their miracles as been mentioned in the Quran. The point is that here, we do not make a distinguish or a difference between any of these prophets. We believe in Jesus and his miracle. We believe in Moses and his miracle. And we believe Muhammad as a lost prophet and his miracle. So the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent with, their, with, with his prophets just to let people believe in them and believe in their message to make it easier. To make it easier for prophets um, to prove to human being that we are being sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was very um, kind and affectionate mm -hmm. with uh, not only with his believers or with believers, but with women, children, but, and also, uh, enemies. but also with enemies, exactly. Wa is what is your motto on this, sir? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him. In a verse, he said that Bil Mu'minin Ra'uf Rahim, so you are merciful for believers. But in other verse, he said that Rahmatul Lil Alameena, Wama Arsal Naka Ya Muhammad, Illa Rahmatul Lil Alameena. So we have sent you, Muhammad, as a mercy for believers. Is it, is the Quran says only for believers, for non Muslims, for animals? So Lil Alameena for the entire world. 
And this is what? A lot of traditions and a lot of hadiths. Anas ibn Malik, for example. Khadimu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He served Anas ibn Malik, a very famous narrator of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. And he is a servant of the Prophet. He served the Prophet Muhammad 14 years. And he's saying that, Khadamtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashra sinin, ma qala li uffun qat. Wala qala li shay'un fa'altuh aw sana'tuh lima sana'tuh. Wala li shay'un taraktuh lima taraktuh. This is Anas ibn Malik. You're going to translate it or should I? Yeah, translate? yeah, we could translate it. The Anas hadith or the hadith of Anas, which has been one of the authentic hadiths that been mentioned in Al-Bukhari and the Muslim, mm. which is the most authentic box after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anas said that I served the Prophet Muhammad for more than 10 years. And he never said, off for me. He never said a word of displeasure for me. He never asked me, why did you sue for something I did? And he never asked, why did you live for something that I didn't read? This is how the way he treated, that's why historian of history who studied the Prophet's biography in a very well way, he loved with the Prophet Muhammad character, particularly with the way that he treated people and animals and others. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waqaf al Yahudi. He stood up for a funeral of a Jewish man. When he passed by the Prophet and his companions was around him and he stood up. So the companions was wondering, saying that Janazat Yahudiya, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's a funeral for a Jewish man. He said that Alaysat Nafsan isn't a soul. So how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a mercy for non-Muslims, makes the historian and make the history of people fell in love with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was merciful to the animal, to the kids. As for the kids, for example, there is a famous hadith that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that إِنِّي لَأَدْخُلُ فِي الصَّلَاةِ وَأُرِيدُ أَنْ أُطِيلَ فِيهَا فَأَسْمَعُ بُكَاءَ الصَّبِيِّ فَأُقْسِرُ الصَّلَاةَ خَشْيَةَ أَنْ أَشُكَّ عَلَىٰ أُمِّهِ You see how the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treat the kids He's fearing to make it difficult for his mother. He said that in the hadith that, and this is a general rule in al-fiqh, in Islamic jurisprudence, it's allowed for an imam to shorten the prayer, fearing the difficult for the mother of a kid. So Allah, the Prophet Muhammad saying that, Inni la fi salah, I start to pray. And I intended to make it longer. When I hear a baby cry, I make it shorter. Fearing that to make it a little bit difficult for his mother. As for the animals, as for a lot of hadiths that mentioned, and even in Islam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and authentic hadiths makes being merciful and treated animal, animal in a very well way, make it as a gate to paradise. Hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Baynama rajulun yasiru fi tariq a man was walking in the street and he was a very thirsty man, was a thirst. That's why he took the man that was a thirst man, a chan, very thirst man, and he found a well. He went down in the well and bring some water to drink the water. Upon that, فَإِذَا بِكَلْبٍ يَلْهَسُ مِنْ شِدَّةِ الْعَطَشِ فَقَالَ وَاللَّهِ لَقَدِ بَلَغَ بِهَذَا الْكَلْبُ الَّذِي بَلَغَ بِهِ so a man after finishing that, after the man went down in the well and drank water and satisfied his thirst, he found a dog. The dog was so thirsty to the extent that he was eating the mud. That's why that man, what did he do as, as a merciful act? He went down with the well, bring some water for the dog and give a drink to the dog. فَشَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ صَنِيعًا فَغَفَرَ لَهُ In which the hadith of Prophet Muhammad also, Allah thanked him for what he did and for, forgave him. So the Sahaba or the companions of the Prophet asked Muhammad, إِنَّ لَنَا فِي الْبَهَائِمِ لَأَجْرٌ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Is there a reward for serving and delivering a drink for, for animals? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that فِي كُلِّ كَبِدٍ رَطَبٍ مَا إِنْ أَجْرٍ You have a reward in all animals. Even in another hadith, 
mistreating animals. You see the way that in Islam, mistreating animals could be a way to the hellfire. The hadith in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Imra'atun dakhalat in naru fi her. A lady entered the hell because of a cat. Because she mistreating the cat. She imprisoned the cat. Habasatha. La at'amatha wa la tarakatha ta'akulu min kashra. So she imprisoned the cat. She neither feed her or nor let her to eat from her. That's why what is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's why the Quran describes him وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Okay, finally, sir, how to teach our children, which is very important nowadays, because mm -hmm. these are our future, um, of course, calibers. Of generation that will, of Muslims. Uh, yes, that yep. will represent us mm -hmm. and our, In the future. of course, uh, and represent the Ummah. Yes, exactly. How do we teach our children to follow uh, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him as a model, as a role model that we should always be looking up. You know that the kids and the children are, as you said, that they are the following, the coming generation of the Prophet and of the Prophet's Ummah. And the most important thing for kids, that kids are imitating what their parents, what his parents, what his father do. That's why we need to create for him or provide him with a suitable Islamic environment in which they can found that that his father his or her father imitating the prophet's model as as even the, the western and most non-muslims people saying about the prophet's islam that muhammad's life is the best example for the whole humanity so it is our duty as a father as a family to provide our kids our teenager to tell them to let them know about the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while they're kids to teach them how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in his family the Prophet served even his family, his wives Aisha Aisha, the mother of believer when she was asked about the Prophet's manners Hadithina ya umma al-mu'minina an khulki rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kama jaa fi hadith Jabir as it comes in hadith Jabir that he mentioned and asked, and asked uh, uh, the mother of believer Aisha, the, the Prophet's wife, how was the Prophet's manner in his, in his house? So Aisha, the mother of believer, said that, Ala taqra al Quran? He said that, Bala. Allah says, Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. Allah says, Wa innaka la ala khulukun azim. Aisha replied, said that, Kana khulukuhu al Quran. Muhammad's manner was the Quran. So that hadith to translate it, hadith in which, the prophet, in which Aisha was asked about what about the character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the house. He, she said that, don't you recite the Holy Quran? He said that, yes, I recite the Holy Quran and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٌ عَظِيمٌ You are of the best manner and the best characters. She said that Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كَانَ قُرْآنًا يَمْشِي عَنَ الْأَرْضِ his character was the Quran. So it is our duty to teach our children and to let them know what was the Prophet, his biography. And pray for them to go to yeah, go how, after how the rules How to deal with them. others. How to deal with non-Muslims. It is really very important. The Quran says that, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. So that you have to treat all people, regardless of their religion, in a very good way. To let them know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how could be, was tolerant? How could was, he was fair? You, you know that, that is um, the death disease of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He seek and sought permission of other wife. At azanu li an amrada ind Aisha. Yes, I know. So for some people who are calling for blogamy, it is in Islam. But you see how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was dealing in a very justly and fairly way even before his death. To let our kids see that what is the last saying of the Prophet Muhammad. La ilaha illallah. What is the last saying of the Prophet Muhammad that to let all our kids know that. As salatu wa ma malakat aymanukum. So the best thing and the last word. Again. As salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. This is what is the last recommendation of the Prophet Could Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. 
Prayer and wives. Take This care one. of your prayers Prayer. and your wives. Prayer, as-salah, 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 wa ma malakat aymanukum and wives. This is what is the last recommendation. And then he said in the last, in the, in the, in the farewell speech, Wallahi ma al-faqru akhsha alaykum, wa lakinni akhsha alaykum ad-dunya fatatanafasuha kama tanafasuha fatuhlikum kama ahlakatuhum. This is the last word that the Prophet said in the farewell speech before the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not the poverty that I fear for you. I fear for you the worldly riches that you competed at the last nations or the beautifulest ummas compete for it. What's That's happening nowadays? What's happening some... nowadays? Our unity has been destroyed. So we need to tell our children that what the hadith of the Prophet said that How could we treat together as a Muslims, as a believer, that مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم كمثل الجسد الواحد? This is a teaching of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم saying that all Muslims as one body. So you have to treat Muslims in a good way, and you have to treat most non-Muslims in a very good way. This is a teaching of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, and this is the teaching of the tradition and the Quran uh, of of our recommendation. Of course. Okay, uh, of course, um, discussing with you, Prophet Muhammad, uh, may Allah peace Allah be Allah upon Allah him, Allah. will never end. It needs chapters yep. and chapters, and it needs episodes and episodes. Of Because um, uh, you have wonderful, wonderful knowledge that added a lot to our happy episode Mulet today. For all our viewers, hey, hey, thank you so many much. Many happy returns so for all of us yeah. and to all uh, Muslims all around all Muslims the world, all over the world, here in Egypt and all around the world. All over the world. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Saeed uh, Kishk, for your, uh, of you. course, uh, English Islamic researcher at the Islamic Research Academy. Thank you very much for highlighting the image of Prophet Muhammad, may pleasure. peace be upon him. Thank you for of having course, me. Uh, especially through Western eyes. Thank you very much for being with Thank me today in this me. very special and episode. And happy Mulit for all Muslims Thank all you, around sir. the world. And greetings, Islamic greetings. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum, 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 alaykum. Alaykum. Thank you. Dear viewers, you're still watching Nile Cruise. Stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be right back again.